This week we'll be creating cityscapes inspired by James Rizzi with silly faces. For this project, you can hold your paper horizontally or vertically. For this project, you will need a piece of white paper, a sharpie, bright colored watercolor markers, and some crayons. We'll begin our project by drawing rectangles on our paper in order to start making buildings. Your buildings don't have to be the same exact height. You can put some behind others in order to show space. And you can combine any shapes that you like in order to create a more interesting cityscape. Now that we've finished drawing our buildings, it's time to add silly faces using shapes. Here are some possible examples that you could use. As I'm drawing my faces, I'm thinking about what the shape of my building might give a feeling for, or how I want my building to look like it might be feeling. This building's looking off to the side. Now that I've finished making my buildings with permanent marker, it's time to go in with my marker and make my windows and doors for my building. Here are some possible ideas for what windows could look like. Remember, a window can be as simple as a rectangle with a plus sign going through it, or you can make something a little bit more complicated by changing the shapes of your windows or adding some inside details. Now that we have our windows drawn in, we can add other details like a sun or a moon in the sky or maybe there's a hot air balloon floating by in the background. Next we'll use crayon in order to protect the areas that we don't want marker to go into. Maybe it'll be your background items or you'll decide that you're going to color some of your windows in so they look like lights are on or that there's nobody in the house. Now that we've colored all of our details in, it's time to start adding some color to the rest of our buildings. If you don't have markers, then you're going to color the rest of your buildings using crayon. Remember to keep it bright and colorful. If you do have markers, we're going to go around the edges of our building on the inside with marker. If you're using watercolor markers, you only need to do around the edges. If you are using a permanent marker, you're going to want to color in the entire building using that marker. Once I'm done with my buildings, I want to go around my background with the color I would like my sky to be. Remember, your sky comes all the way down to meet the ground 
unless there's an object blocking it. So there shouldn't be any blue lines across the very top of your page. You may decide that you want to have an evening picture, so you're going to use darker colors, or maybe you'd like to have it be a daytime picture. If you're really feeling bold, you could do half of your page in the nighttime and half of your page in the daytime. Again, I'm just going around the edges of my objects. and the edge of my paper. If you're working with watercolor markers, we're going to add one more step. For this step, you'll use a paintbrush and a cup of water. You're going to wet your paintbrush and go over your marker just with that water. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the paint be created with your watercolor markers. As I'm doing this, I'm taking time to make sure that I have enough water on my brush, that I'm not pushing my brush up the page, but that I'm letting the top of my brush lead my pet paint brush wherever it needs to go. I add more water if I have a problem with not being able to get my markers to spread enough. And this is where that crayon that you put down is going to help protect those areas that you didn't want marker to run into. I'm taking care to make sure that I'm putting my water just on the purple area right now because I don't want purple going into my other buildings. I also don't want that purple going inside of my eyes. I'd like them to stay white. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not putting any water in those areas. If I find that I've gotten a big puddle of water and I don't want it there anymore, I can simply take a paper towel and blot the water off the areas I don't want there to be water. Once my entire building is painted, I rinse off my brush and I move to the next building. I don't want to go to the one that's right next to it yet because I want to give the water a chance to dry out a little bit. So I'm going to move over. Once you've finished painting all of your areas with water, you might decide to go back and just blot a little bit in spots that you might have missed or where you're finding objects or running into one another. After you've done that blotting, you have a finished piece of artwork that looks like a cityscape created by James Rizzi. Thanks for viewing. Make sure you send me your pictures when you're finished.